Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 173 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with Trevor. We have no Damon this week. Damon's actually in Hilton Head uh, at the yeah. Hilton Head uh, DVC Resort. So, Being our non-Disney uh, Parks correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Didn't he, he say he was going to Universal or something? That wasn't this weekend or was that another weekend he was going to No, go? he, he said he was going to be doing that, I think, later in the summer. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But yeah, he 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 said it already that you know he he doesn't see any reason to go to Disney over the summer, which is fair. So yeah, he's. Well, I guess uh, if he, you're not into the Guardians ride, or if you're if he's not really you know because he still hasn't done Rise of the Resistance yet, he, like so if there's mm-hmm. he doesn't care about any of those things, I guess sure. But yeah, that's I mean that's exactly it. You know, it's you know not every ride that comes out is for everybody, and he's waiting for Tron. I mean, so am I, but uh, sure. I, I have other things to do before then, like, you know, actually get back to the parks. So, well, we'll get a good look at it when we go on the people mover together, Trevor, uh, in a few weeks here at the me- after the meetup. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we're, we have to go on the people mover, right? So, oh, of course. I, absolutely. I, I mean, <laughs> y- you know, I, I guess let, let's start talking about this because, um, yeah. you know, we are less than two weeks out. Um, uh, I, I guess the first question is, and my wife actually asked me this: uh, Are we actually going to use Genie Plus at all when we're there? I don't know if we should or not. Um, yeah, it's a tough question, right? Because you know we're we're going to have some listeners with us, and I don't know if they're going to be doing it or not. Um, but I mean, we are going to be a Magic Kingdom. I feel like it should be a late Magic Kingdom day because Magic Kingdom closes at four thirty that day. So I bet a lot of yeah. people are going elsewhere that day. Um. I don't know. I, I, I guess we'll kind of have to see. I, I, I hadn't really mm. thought about it much. I was thinking to myself about how we needed to link our plans up. And I was like, oh, I should ask Trevor uh, what email address he uses. Then I'm like, wait a second. They have the QR code <laughs> thing now. We got to try that out. <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah, we do. You're right. I, I was looking at that, too, actually. I, so last night, um, I was going through my uh, my Disney experience and all that, making sure that all of my stuff was set up because um, I realized that I hadn't really... Uh, looked at it in a while like i and it was funny i actually didn't even have the uh the reservation for the hotel in my disney experience so oh geez <laughs> that, yeah that would have been awkward if uh if i got down there and you know couldn't have checked into my room or anything like that so well it's funny you said that because like i got a, i got like an email or an alert from disney to check into my room i was like oh yeah i haven't done that yet like and i, and I really don't care because like i'm not Mm-hmm. I don't care about room requests, whatever, like wherever they want to put me is fine. It's but, you know, like I do like to check in ahead of time because I do like the ability to just walk to my room. I, I really don't want to go to the front desk or anything. So if I don't yeah. have to, you know. Yeah, for, for that reason, actually, I so same thing. I, I went and I did all that. And I, originally I was looking at um, they they have uh, they had the, the 50th anniversary um, magic band in yeah. my Disney experience. And I was going to, uh, I was thinking about buying it, but I'm glad I held off because I saw today that they, uh, that the Magic Band Plus came out. I thought it wasn't coming out till later this year. No, uh, that I I guess the first, so, so it's not the, it's not the fancy one that they've been showing. There's a, a red, black and a blue one that I saw. Oh. And, um, but I want to check those out now. So I'm I'm kind of glad that I didn't uh, I didn't like pre buy Magic Bands or anything, but that also serves the same function that I have no reason to actually go to the uh, to the front desk now, and I should be able to just walk straight to my room and and start going. So oh man, these are yeah I've just I just pulled this up because I hadn't seen yeah. this yet because um, I I thought they they did like a teaser, but they I thought they said later this year, and then all of a sudden now here it is and. I did see that these, and you know, I had this on here, but you know, it's rechargeable. Uh, it does. It comes. It looks like it comes with a charging cable, which is cool. Good because um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the old ones with the the battery that dies and you can't use any of the like extra magic yeah. stuff is uh, yeah, not great. <laughs> oh, and it's got a little charging dock it comes with too. Look at that. All right, Fancy. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like a it's like a, a smartwatch. Um, yeah, no, I, it's cool. So you you think you're gonna get one? Um, actually, I, I think I like the I black one. I like the, the black ones and I got a nice look to it. I, I was leaning towards the blue myself. Blue's good too. It was good <laughs> yeah, too. I, I like, the I like blue, the blue. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, just because so they don't so, have green. Green's my favorite color. But So they're letting you order those ahead of time now, or are you just purchasing? No. no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the magic, the plus ones are not ahead of time. But like I said, I, when I was looking on, uh, cause you know, you can pre order your magic bands is they had a, uh, the limited edition 50th anniversary one that you can, uh, pre order. But, uh, yeah. Um, I was looking at that and I was like, nah, you know what? Maybe I'll just wait until I'm there and, uh, see what magic bands they have available. So I, I think part of, um, you know, we're going to be in Disney Springs. Um, I, I think we should That's definitely right, yeah. make a trip by the, uh, the, the shop that has all the magic bands. I, I don't even know what it's called, but y- you know yeah, where it yeah. is, right? Well, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The one by the Christmas store there. Um, this, this article I was, I'm reading says, uh, the guest relations and Disney IT both did not know how to link the, uh, link the the band to their your my disc experience <laughs> um, it says please note it seems that these have been released early and neither guest relations nor disney it knew how to link them to my disc experience <laughs> really they that's pretty they're funny. different than the current magic bands yeah you think that's... it'd be the same process right yeah, uh, yeah i don't know it's kind of weird um okay but yeah uh, yeah no we can go check them out i mean i definitely i i, I was uh, i was interested by these i mean um i didn't see how much the prices were I thought they were thirty. That's what I saw. Is it thirty? That's not bad, yeah. actually. We we were wondering that if it came with a charger or not, right? Like that was a big thing that we had thought at the beginning. It was like if it has all these features, it kind of has to come with a charger, right? Right. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, well, that's cool. Now I, I got one other question for you, just around the trip. Uh, have you started packing yet? I'm a pack before than like the night before type of person. So I'm not. Oh, really? <laughs> I hate packing. I hate it with a passion because no matter how thorough of a job I do with packing, I always feel like I'm forgetting something. So I, yeah, like I always feel like I'm forgetting something. It, it, it my, my wife laughs every time because I'm like, as we're walking out the door, I'm always like, are we forgetting something? And she's like, probably, you know, <laughs> if we do, if we did, we, it, we'll, we'll get it. You know, if we need it, we'll get we'll get it or whatever. But yeah, no, I mean, I'll probably pack a little bit early only because um, there might be some stuff I don't have, um, you know, that I need like to 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 refresh. Like, I, I don't know if I have sunscreen lying around or not. That's still good or, or in a good enough amount that I'll need, um, you know, some of that kind of stuff. Like, I, I'm not sure. I'll have to look. But, you know, I. I, I, I'm not a pack ahead of time. I know some people like pack a month ahead of time for their trips. That's just not me. I mean, I, I, I started, I started packing two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> but you're not packing like, are you not packing like clothes though? Right. You're packing like, uh, like toilet oh, yeah. and stuff or are you well, doing no, clothes too? So, so, so the, so the fun part is, is that, I, you know, um, like I, I have started packing things like my shorts and stuff because it's, yeah, yeah. It's been snowing it's cold here. there, so yeah, yeah, you I, do that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've I've been uh, I, I've been packing a, a lot of the stuff that I can pack, and uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm um, kind of the same thing. I've I realized that because of the fact that I haven't traveled in two years, a lot of the travel stuff that I had, like you said, like sunscreen and stuff, um, uh, I didn't have anything. Like I, I ended up having to go out and do a bunch of shopping for um, travel stuff because. Yeah, it's. Uh, Is it a challenge to buy sunscreen in Calgary in the winter time? <laughs> um, little bit. It, it's not. Say, right? I mean, I, honestly, the 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 easiest place to find it usually is Walmart because they tend to just carry it year round. But they just have everything yeah. always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, is that the the selection it it, it it's um we have very seasonal. Um, it was very seasonal stuff sure. here. Like they're, yeah, I get that. So, so it's funny because they'll, they'll, uh, um, what they'll do is that they'll put stuff out like a kind of starting around now you'll start finding like the summertime stuff. But then by the time it's summer, if you, um, like if you start looking like August for things like sunscreen, you usually don't find it because they put the fall stuff out. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Okay. so it's, it, it can be hard to find certain things just because of the fact that, um, yeah, they, they're always rotating and thinking about, oh, you know, we're moving into fall or we're moving into winter. And so a lot of the stores don't just don't carry the stuff that you necessarily want when you're going somewhere hot. Like even, uh, yeah. I know in the yeah. past, like finding my son, uh, swim trunks, I, I know we, we've, we've talked about swim trunks previously on the podcast. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we've, we've been in that position where it's like, I'm shopping online for swim trunks for my son because 
he didn't uh, or, you know, we we didn't think about it and it was it was too far past the season. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think because of all that, I'm I'm definitely leaning more towards the uh, I'm one of those people that that, you know, I start thinking about it a month ahead. I don't like have everything packed, but I, you know, I'm I'm probably about 70 percent of the way there right now. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, and I, I've also I've been thinking about the the you know what I want to wear, you know, because I feel like I I, I want to I, I don't I mean I I want to wear welcome home gear, and I usually opt for just like a hat, right? Like mm-hmm. that's usually the route I go. I mean, I have shirts and stuff, but although the Haunted River Country, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, everybody, I never actually got a shirt of the Haunted River Country of uh, uh, art that we did. Oh, you never got one for yourself? I did, well, no, I did a zip up hoodie, right? So okay, I have a zip yeah, up yeah. hoodie, yeah. but I'm not really going to need that in May in Florida, yeah. so I'm not going to be able <laughs> to wear that around, you know. Um, so I don't have that, but I mean, I'll I'll have some welcome home gear, obviously, that I'm going to wear. But I, you know, I also have some just unrelated disney kind of gear that i can wear you know i i i mean i don't want to give away what i'm gonna wear i mean it's <laughs> but yeah but I, i'm excited and I, you know by the way i noticed a couple there were a couple people that seemed like a couple listeners that seemed like they were going to be at disney uh during our meetup but didn't necessarily say they were coming to the meetup and you know i was talking to a few people and it was like well i was kind of like a maybe i wasn't sure just want to let everybody know we do have some extra space right so like there this is a fairly small meetup that we're doing and we have there's like a minimum amount of people we have to pay for regardless right so and that's where where we're at right so we're, we're we haven't actually even hit that minimum so if you are just a maybe like at least do the little ticket thing even if you're just a maybe and you don't show up if you no show it's not going to be a big deal right because we are already yeah. we already have space left so um so yeah so anyway uh it, it, you know we 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 do still have some space left. So if you do still want to come, please, you know, let us know. I, I did. Um, somebody asked about lobster corn dogs. We tried to get lobster corn dogs, not happening for this. Unfortunately, they, they're not serving them right now, but um, you know, we do have a really good menu in place. We're just going to hang and eat some food and, and, you know, do whatever. And then we'll probably go to Epcot afterwards and you know, it'll be a good time. That's really, that's really all I can say about it. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it, yeah, it, it's going to be, it's going to be a whirlwind. I know that. Like I'm, I, I realize how much we're doing a lot of stuff in two days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be good. And yeah, you know, please, fun. yeah, yeah, pl- please come, you know, you know, you know, we'd, we'd love to hang out with, uh, with you guys. So, uh, yeah, like, like Tom said, if you haven't, uh, responded yet, you know, just let us know so that we, you know, w- we we still have space, but we want, we want to make sure we don't go beyond what we have allocated. So, um, yeah, we just appreciate people not uh, crashing the party, so to speak. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So even if you're maybe just RSVP, right? That's yeah. that's fine. I I also say too, like I can also understand if you don't want to like peel out a couple hours of your vacation to come hang out with us at Disney Springs, or if you're with your family or whatever, like that's totally fine too. Come find mm-hmm. us in the park later. We'll do that too. We'll meet up with yeah. you there. Oh. I mean that that's fine too. So, you know, it's, I'll have my uh, my exclusive Welcome Home podcast hat. So oh, there you go. Mentioned, you guys yeah. will be able to find us the the, the yellow. Oh, you have the, the flat brim one, the cool person. Yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Me and David both got the cool ones. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye out for that. And uh, you should be able to find us. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's that's the way to do. Yeah. You have the cool hat. I forgot that you guys got cool hats and I, you know, just got the. Well, see, I don't wear hats like that, though. So I, I don't know. Right. I just not my my style. So. I've got what do they call it? The dad hat or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. That's fine. You know, it goes with the dad bod and the dad jokes. So we're good. Um, yeah, we're, we're good with the dad stuff. <laughs> yeah. So no, I'm excited though, man. I, I, I mm-hmm. you know, oh, th- here's another question. Have you gone onto that food and wine app yet? And like, you know, look through uh, all the dishes and uh, decided. I what did. You- yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I actually, I have some stuff wish listed, and I think I do too. Yeah. You and I need to talk when uh, when I get there on the Friday, and I think we need to uh, coordinate a bit of a plan <laughs> around that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, listen, we'll just walk we around and hit notes. whatever we can. You know, it's it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, I think like, I think it would be good if we compare notes just so that um, yeah, sure yeah like we can we can kind of prioritize where we go and all that right. It's the only thing missing from that app is the inability to to uh, share with others. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, make like a group wish list or something, and then everyone yeah. can vote. I guess I could just take a screenshot of my wish list and send it to you, right? Like, 
Or we could do it in person. <laughs> well, we could do that too. We could also do that. You're right. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about it though. I mean, we could just wander around and whatever we run into, we run into, right? So <laughs> Yeah. Um, there's nothing on that my list where I'm like, oh, I have to absolutely have that or my Disney trip will be ruined. So um I you know, it, there's just some stuff I would like to I, eat. <laughs> I, I just need to I need to get over my I'm I'm having a little bit of fear of missing out. Like, I get it. I get it. But we, because we have such a small amount of time, try. Though, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, like, that's the thing is I know we don't have a lot of time there. And I just, you know, I, I know it, 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 you know, I'm not going to see and do everything. It's just, yeah. I. What, what time is Epcot open till that night, though? Do we know? Is it nine or is know. it 11? Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to have to look. Because, I mean, even if it's nine, I mean, look, the meetup's done at 3.30. They kick us out at 3.30. So... We could feasibly get to Epcot by, you know, four, four thirty. And then if even if it closes at nine, which it probably does, um, then, you know, we'll still have good, good, you know, four and a half hours. So, yeah, but, uh, you know, I can't eat for four and a half hours. <laughs> a fair so point. Like... It's a fair, we can also go in the morning, too. I mean, uh, we haven't yes. even really talked about that. We can we can go uh, early in the morning before the meetup. Uh, that's something we can do. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Epcot's up until nine uh, on the day that we're there. So. Okay. We can also, I mean, listen, Magic Kingdom closes at 4.30 the day we're going to Magic Kingdom. So we can hop over on a, on Sunday, hop over to, to Epcot and eat whatever we uh, didn't, want, didn't do before. That's true, actually. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, well, listen, okay. I'm always up for a monorail ride from Magic Kingdom to uh, to Epcot. So I, I, I'll use any excuse to do that. Oh yeah, that that's easy. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So <laughs> yeah. to me, and I mean, we talked about the, the monorail's a ride to me. That, that's a, that's an actual ride mm-hmm. uh, that I count as part of the rides. So, <laughs> so anyway, we're we're psyched. Right. We're excited for the invite. We, I mean, for the invite for the meetup. We we've got uh we've got some pins. We're gonna bring uh some of the new ones that we bought uh, that we uh, just got uh, that are with the the logo that we use for Patreon. So usually you can only get that stuff on Patreon, but now we will give it to anybody that shows up to the uh, to the meetup. So you can get some new pins too. Uh, so that'll be good. Although, you know, if Damon were here, he would say the silver ones only, the gold ones are only for the Patreon members. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's probably not, not going to so be there do. though. So I yeah. can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're, we're, we're doing our thing here. It'll be fine. Yeah. He may, he, he, Damon's schedule is still a little bit of flux. So it, it's going to yeah. be a last minute game time decision. And then, um, you know, we'll have to see from there who yeah, he decides and, and, to stay with. <laughs> yeah. the, the the funny thing is, is we we knew this. We we knew that yeah, you know yeah. Damon was a, a definite maybe the whole time. So yeah, exactly. Um, we're, we're not we're not making any you know assumptions that Damon will be there. <laughs> no, we we're not gonna we're gonna advertise that he will be. He may be. He may may not be. That's that's really where we're at. So, all right. I think okay. there's enough meetup talk, right? You want to talk yeah, about other stuff? Yeah. Let's uh, do some listener questions. We have a lot. We got a lot this week. I don't know what it was. We got a lot this week. So Dan right. K says, "What are your, some of your favorite non Disney vacations?" Um, I, I don't know what what is that? Wait, I don't know what those are. What, <laughs> do, do we do I things mean, other than Disney. I, I can say um, probably some of my favorite vacations when I was younger were going to the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia, Canada. Okay. Um. Very for anyone that's been there, you know, it's it's a beautiful area. Um, lots of orchards, lots of campgrounds, lakes. Um yeah, um that's that's probably my favorite place to go outside of Disney. Um yeah. even closer than that would be um uh Banff National Park in Alberta. Um yeah, I think I've talked about a couple of times, you know, we stay at Canmore, which uh, is it's actually inside um the national park or no yeah yeah it's just inside of it um i think sorry i can't remember where the uh there's there's a whole gate thing you have to go through to get to into banff national park but um yeah it's it, it's basically it's you know it's it's like wilderness lodge but um just actually in the wilderness <laughs> <laughs> not All in right. the middle of a swamp or in, in middle the actual of, wilderness yeah yeah not yeah, not like with mountains and fake, stuff. Yeah. not with uh fake uh owls and uh crickets and uh piped in right that's <laughs> no there, there there's real owls and real mountain lions and stuff yeah. so yeah yeah exactly uh so i think mine actually and, and i'm not really much of a beach person 
but my family, you know, every couple of years or so, we or in, and also a lot when I was younger too, we would always like in the summertime, we'd rent a beach house for like a week or two, right? And we'd hang out at the beach house. And that was always great. Like, so we've done, you know, like the Outer Banks, uh, you know, most more recently, and this is probably six or so years ago, uh, we did, a, we, we rented a house in Hilton Head. Uh, for a week and that was that was a lot of fun too so i you know i i like um that those kinds of things is you know renting a house and just kind of hanging out and you know doing a puzzle for the week you know <laughs> like just doing nothing just just relaxing as much as humanly possible uh that's those are always fun my wife and i also did it before my daughter came along we did an all-inclusive adults only uh, re- uh you know uh, place uh resort uh down in punta cana which was really nice that was a lot of fun too so i would love to do something else like that but um and, and my wife and I are also dying to take a cruise, but that's you know neither here nor there. We we are gonna wait for my daughter to get a little bit older before we do that one. So Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a good idea. And yeah, and again, like you said before, you know, you know, you know, let your daughter um, you know, let her be old enough to actually experience it too, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So uh, I think you should read this next question. Uh, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so we have a question from Jennifer. Uh, um, for for those that know, my my wife is in the group, and she says, "What is an awesome present for Trevor to buy his wife to bring home from WDW while he's at the Welcome Home Meetup?" <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the guilt is starting already. <laughs> well, yeah, she I mean she she's been she's been very vocally. Right yeah. yeah. Well, well she she's been supportive, but she's also like, you know, go on this trip, have fun and 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 I, I I've said to her a couple of times, you, you know, you know, I I haven't I haven't done a lot of um trips away from my family. Like I've I've got I've traveled for business and stuff in the past and that's fine. Um this will actually be the first time I've I've done you know, a trip to, to Disney by myself. Yeah. And, you know, she's, yeah, she's kept hinting at, you know, Oh, you know, you're going to bring me back a new purse or what are you going to bring me? Right. And it's like, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't have a lot of room in my luggage either. So, um, you gotta yeah. bring back something though. You got, I mean, I, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm also looking at bringing back something too. I haven't decided what yet, but I mean, I, I did see that some of that main street electrical parade merch that they were, that's going to be in Disneyland showed up at Disney world for some reason. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I might rifle through some of that stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking um, we we may have to go over to the uh, to the the co op for. Um, I, I know probably not a purse. Like, like, sorry, the the purses are <laughs> very expensive. But there. I know my wife's in need of a new wallet. And, oh, there you go. There you yeah, go. I think I think we may um, we may go and uh, do some shopping over there. Um, before the meetup or well, after she, meetup. she listens we'll to the show though. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell her not she, to listen. <laughs> she does, but she doesn't listen to every episode. And so oh, I'm taking okay. a bit of a gamble here. Yeah. Um, okay. Even if she does, you know, she's still not going to know what I'm going to do when I'm there. I mean, um, uh, she knows I know where the purses and the wallets are, but that doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to buy her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, yeah, no, I, I got to get my wife something too. I, I've been, mm-hmm. I mean, listen, I, I can't really know what to get her until I see it, right? Like, because, yeah, I don't know everything yeah. that's at the parks right now as far as merch goes. So I, I got to just explore and find something, right? And, and that's exactly it, too, is, you know, I'm, I'm sure when we're there, I'm going to see something and I'm going to be like, oh, my wife would really like that. And yeah, and I'll I'll pick it up. So and then I'll, I'll probably get something for my son to really, um, you know, Stitch has been his thing from day one. So I'll find something Stitch related for him. There you go. Yeah. That works. Uh, so yeah, that's that's good. Uh, let's see. I just to move it along because we have so many questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, ideal VIP, and I did. I left some out too because we just we have the, too many. This is from Vicky, by the way. Yes, it's from Vicky. Yeah, yeah who is, I, I think Vicky's coming to the meetup. Uh, ideal VIP tour itinerary. I would start MK for Pirates, Haunted Mansion, Seven Dwarfs, Tron if it is open. Then uh, Hollywood Studios for Slinky Dog, Rise of Resistance, and Tower of Terror with lunch at 50s primetime. Then Epcot for Frozen and Test Track. When the tour ends, I would do Epcot uh, eating and living with the land. Wow, that is quite the uh, that's quite the itinerary mm. there. But no Animal Kingdom, I noticed. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, that's you know that makes me sad a little bit. But you know, it's okay. I understand. Not everybody loves Animal Kingdom like I do. Yeah, I would. I would, <laughs> I would actually want. Uh, I would want Animal Kingdom in my itinerary. You want some Everest in there, right? You, yeah, you want an Everest, Everest yeah. flight of passage, yeah. 
Oh yeah, Flight of Passage. Yeah, I almost forgot about that existing for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why, but yeah, I I feel like uh, Kilimanjaro with a VIP would be interesting. Probably, yeah. I mean, yeah. So I I think this is a good itinerary. I think those these are the ones that I would hit too. Except I'd probably swap out Seven Dwarfs. Well, no, I'd keep Seven Dwarfs and I'd throw in a Big Thunder. Uh, just to you know, because everybody knows my love for Big Thunder. That's you know, that's that's in there. Okay. So. <laughs> if, if you had to trade though, if, if you know, if it was Seven Dwarfs or Big Thunder, I choose Big Thunder. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I I, I think I Big Thunder's a better coaster than Seven Dwarfs. I do. Yeah. Um, I think it's more fun. Uh, I think, I mean, listen, the theming I think, uh, is level on those two, but I, it, it's such seven dwarves is biggest problem. And everyone knows this. And we've said this a million times. It's too short. Mm-hmm. And it's, that, that's the biggest problem with it. Right. And big thunder, it just, it's got a different vibe to it, man. It's like, got it's a whole, like a whole cool backstory and just the theming of it. And just, I don't know, just the, even, even though like, seven dwarfs has that swinging back and forth thing you don't even really notice it's happening like so there's no feeling there and and you know with with uh big thunder it just kind of feels like you're out of on an out of control train and like it really gives that feeling and and uh yeah. you know i i just i just love that ride. i just one of my favorites so yeah i would i would always pick that over the, seven dwarfs the the one thing that would push big thunder over the top as well i think would be if they actually got the uh the last lift he'll got this the same update as disneyland because yeah that's it's it definitely makes it uh um a lot more exciting <laughs> yeah that's un- I, I don't know why they haven't done that yet they feel like they need to or at least do something cool at the end there uh, you know like because i've yeah. i've seen videos I've, I've looked at videos of the ending there and it's just it's just so cool and i just really wish they would do it at disney world too but and it seemed like they were going to the it was going to be shut down for a while and then it seemed like they were going to do it and then it didn't happen um mm-hmm. maybe a budget cut or something uh, who knows but but anyway, yeah, uh, I did notice Vicky didn't mention um, Guardians for Epcot, which I mean, you know, that's kind of sure. Or, actually, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, because because she says, you know, Tron, if it's open, but for Epcot, it's frozen and test track. Yeah, that which, is an interesting, uh, interesting choices there. And no Soren for for Epcot. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to try and ride Soren while we're there. I oh, it's don't... happening. Yeah, it's happening. OK, you don't like right, Soren? Cool. No, it's not that I don't like Soren. It's just it doesn't um it doesn't take priority in my head for some reason. Like yeah, whenever I, I go it. into whenever I go into uh the land pavilion, I I'm always usually thinking about Garden Grill, obviously, and then um living with the land. But I always forget that Soren is there, even though Soren I know is the more um standout attraction i always end up wanting to go on living with the land first so wait are we are we doing living with the land then because i mean i'm fine with that i like yeah yeah i think we should (laughs) i mean yeah yeah i I think we should just uh you know we should we should spend some time in the land pavilion for sure see my my priority at epcot is always spaceship earth that's i like i always i don't feel like Mm. for me a trip to epcot is complete without a ride on spaceship earth that's just me yeah that's that's fair um, yeah, I, that, that's usually for us. That's um, that's usually a closing attraction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like we like when we get towards the end of the night, kind of thing. We'll uh, we'll like because it works out good, right? You get on Spaceship Earth, you you, and then when you get off, you're you're right at the front of the park. Or for us, you know, because we we take the monorail back to our room. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, but now yeah. you got, you're bragging about your monorail access now. <laughs> I, I take my monorail back to my room. <laughs> wait, wait. And so, but you'll take it back to the TTC and then walk right from the TTC, right? You're or yes. you taking the monorail? Okay, you're not going to take the wait. resort loop from there. That oh no, 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 no. You'll when when you uh, so it's close. Yeah, well, I know it's close because I, I the one time I stayed at Poly, it's so close there. But I was like, there's no way you're you're transferring monorails, right? <laughs> like, oh no, 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 yeah. definitely not. I think uh, I, I think you should. Uh, when we go to Magic Kingdom, you should come meet me over at uh, the Poly, and then we can okay. <laughs> you can see you can see how um, how long the trek is from Poly over to the TTC. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know it's short. I mean, I, it's not that far, <laughs> right? Like it's because I, I like when I, I stayed there. You know, we walked to the TTC. Right. I just I just thought it would be weird if you were to transfer. That would be odd because <laughs> it's so close. So that would, that would take longer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So do you want to read Rob's question? Yeah. Um, Rob says, uh, have you heard anything about going back to a longer lead time to book dining 
dining experiences for DVC guests. The current 60-day window versus the previous 120, I believe, makes it very tough to book even DVC-only experiences. Now, I don't recall there ever being a point where dining was longer than 60 days. No, it, was, so, it, it used to be I know. Months, yeah. Yeah. No, um, because I know I know fast pass is were 180 days. Yeah, it, you're right. It was 100. It was 180. Yeah, wasn't it 180? Yes, yeah, yeah, so it was 180 days for fast passes, and then yeah, dining dining's always been 60 days, and, and I remember this because yeah, we would I would always get all my fast passes lined up. I would look at dining, but I wouldn't do anything with dining until the 60 day mark. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I guess the, the thing with that is, I don't think, I don't think dining reservations should be any longer than that. Yeah, I I don't know why I'm like having a hard time remembering this, but I remember it being six months out. I, I that's that was my recollection. I'm I, I feel like everything it's been changed I, for so long now that I'm forgetting. <laughs> I, like I said, I I go back and I think about it, and yeah, I. I because there was always two steps to it. There was always booking fast passes and then dining, but they were never done at the same time. Dining was always done later or, or so closer is, to the trip. This is uh, those staying at Disney owned resorts can book their reservations 180 days in advance. In advance, that was that was what it used to be. So oh, it was really? 180. It was 180. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Why yeah. don't I? It's, been, it's been so long though. Yeah. Man. It's been a couple of years since they got rid of it. So yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I, th- the thing is, is I don't, uh, you know, I still don't think it should be any longer than 60 days. 180 days is so far out to book anything, man. Yeah. Like I, that's, Actually, wait, I, I have that backwards now. That's right. Yeah. It was, yeah. Dining was always first. Yeah. Fast passes were second. Why did I have that backwards? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, yeah, again, it's it's been so long. This is the problem. It's been so long since it's so uh, long since you've gone, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay. Um, I, I don't know. I just I I don't think P. I don't think they're going to go back to that now. But I mean, I don't think does that really make that much of a difference? I guess it did because you got an advantage for staying on property, right? So like maybe they bring it back at some point where they make it so you can book 90 days ahead of time if you're on property and general public is 60 days. I don't know. I hadn't heard anything about them doing that. Um, But I mean, I do think at some point they're going to have to look and say, okay, well, the benefits of staying on property are not what they used to be, right? And, you know, they'll have to give some sort of uh, benefit to to uh to to people staying on property i i don't i don't know i mean i I will say it's been hard to get dining reservations right it has been but i you know it's everybody's at least on an equal playing field i guess but you don't want to be if you're staying if you're paying to stay on property you want an advantage right yeah i guess i mean that that's that's exactly the thing right is you know you know there's there is the advantages to stay on property but then there's also you know the the further the further you book it out you know people you know either you know they they're not thinking that far ahead in terms of planning or um yeah you know you know just not staying on property um i get why you want to book further out and i and i get yeah. why people want you know want to have as much lead time as possible i do you know i i definitely take advantage of that too but um yeah i think to your point i i think it it does keep it a little bit more fair and a little bit more level for everybody but i'm sure disney's going to change it at some point because right now it's it, it's kind of turning into that same problem as like boxing day at walmart right where you know everyone's waiting to do it and then it's like you know everyone crashing through the door so to speak you know to get their dining reservations and mm-hmm. yeah it makes it, it makes it really hard to get what you want um yeah, I, I don't. A very uh, Canadian reference. I don't know if everybody knows what Boxing Day is. <laughs> oh, I, I thought Boxing Day was a thing down in the states too. I mean, is it? I, I don't. I don't know. What is? What is it? I, I'm not I'm unfamiliar. Oh, sorry. I guess. Uh, okay. Duh. Yeah. Um, okay. So Boxing I've heard Day of it. I is, just don't know what it is. <laughs> so I guess it's, it's the next. Clo- it's like Black Friday. Um, oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. So, so, but Boxing Day is usually, um, it's usually the 26th of December. So it's okay. the day after yeah. Christmas. So it's people go out, you know, 
buying more stuff after they've done Christmas, which, um, yeah. So I, I have a little bit of, um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually used to work retail and had to work during boxing day. So I, yeah. I was on the receiving end of people crashing through the door and, and, you know, yeah, seeing all that ugliness, but I mean, that I, happens I, here too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's obviously where the poster ch- children for that here in, here in the United States. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I get why, you know, why Rob is asking about, you know, a, a longer window. Um, I don't see it specifically happening for DVC guests. I think it'll be, you know, because in the past, it, we never had anything as DVC members where we got to book now, like, like for, for dining. I mean, like it was never, it was never that we got to book earlier, even than people staying on property. I think it'll be a matter of whenever they decide that they need to, uh, you know, give a little bit more incentive for on property, they'll do it then. But that's that's not anytime soon. There's so much pent up demand for people coming back to Disney. It's you know that needs to go away before Disney is going to start looking at adding perks back in. Yeah. Well, I, I do think I I think the one advantage you get of staying on property is that you can at sixty days out you can book for your entire stay. Yeah. Right. So like you can book for your entire stay up to ten days, but if you're off property, you can't do that so that's that's the big difference right but i think it'd be better i mean at the same time though disney needs everybody to be able to have access right like so they want to give benefits to the people staying on property yes but then you know most of the guests that come to disney world the the a large majority of the people that come to disney world are not staying on property believe it or not um Mm -hmm. they are not Right. And so they still need those people to be able to make dining reservations too. Right. Like, and, and that's the problem that they run into is they don't want to completely favor it and then have no dining availability ready. I mean, uh, available for non resort guests. That would not be good either. Uh, because you're, I mean, really, you're just making one group of people mad or the other. Right. So, yeah. It just, it, it, it turns away a lot of potential business. Right. Or, sure, you know, sure. I, I get that, you know, you know, that if, like you said, if they made it exclusive to people who are on property, there's a whole subset of people that would just say, well, then fine, I'm not going to Disney at all. Yeah, and so sure. then, then, you know, they don't get money for park tickets or dining or anything at that point. So yeah, Disney has to walk that line of not, <laughs> not making either group angry enough that they stop coming. Exactly. So listen, I would love a DVC benefit where we could book earlier. And I mean, look, they could also fix this too by having like certain tranches of reservations available early and then another tranche that they release at 60 days. You know what I mean? Like they could break it up like that. So it's not just, you know, one group taking away everything all at once, but it is a little more complicated. So, um, so related, uh, Donnie asks, we're going to WDW in July. We're coming up on our 60 day dining reservation window. What are your favorite or must do ADRs that make or break your trip? If you don't get them, ours is California grill, uh, a last night of our trip tradition. Now I get it. If you have a tradition, so like you guys mm-hmm. have that last night of your trip tradition, but for us, I feel like we are a little more flexible, right? So we're not, I don't think there's a particular restaurant that we absolutely have to go to in a way. It's almost good if like one of our regulars is like booked up so we can try something new. You know what I mean? It almost forces us to do something different for us. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the way that we tend to look at it is, um, yeah, we, we have one or two places. So, you know, garden grill is obviously high on our list as well as prime time fifties diner. Um, but, but like you, you know, we're, those are not make or break for us necessarily. They're very, you know, when we start sitting down and talking about it, we, you know, they come up first, but then, you know, we, when we start talking about it more, it's, you know, Hey, do, you know, is, are we fine with maybe skipping at this time and trying something new? Like, like we, we kind of go back and forth on it. Like even, um, prior to, canceling the last couple of trips um, we were actually going to skip guard and grill because um we were leaning towards space 220 so oh yeah yeah i get that um you know so yeah it, it was a case of you know hey we want we really wanted to try this new one um and that you know i would forgo something like garden grill for that but um for, for me it's not even so much about um like it's not even that we have to do certain sit downs. I think it's like 
even when it comes to quick service, I do tend to gravitate towards certain ones that I yeah. like. And, and like, even my, my wife has said, like, I, I think I, I can't think of a trip to magic kingdom where we've not eaten at Pecos bills. I can see that. Yeah. But it's, so again, it's, it's not a sit down, but it's just like, we, we like, we like the atmosphere in there. You know, I know it's a quick service, but you know, it's still, it, it's nice. It, um, I don't mind a quick service. I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with a quick service. Usually the food's pretty good and it's, you know, yeah. And, and that, that's fine. the thing like Pecos bills, quick service has always been really good. Yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, yeah, so so that's always been um yeah, th- that's always been high on our list even though it's not a sit down. Um yeah, I I can't think of any other like I know we already talked about Garden Girl. I can't think of anywhere else where where we're like, you know, we have to do that, right? Like I I yeah, I feel yeah. like we can, you know, we can kind of feel it out in the moment or feel it out, you know, trip by trip and decide if it's something that we want to do. Yeah, so, you know, and that's kind of how I feel, too. But I will say for my 11, 12 day, whatever it is, trip that's coming up in October, you know, we, because we're taking my daughter for the first time in a long time, and, you know, like I've said many times on here before that she's, you know, at an age now where she understands what's going on around her, right? So we really want to prioritize character meals on this trip. And mm-hmm. so, and we also, my mom had requested, well, my mom had requested two places. One, she wants to do hoop to do review, uh, which I, we, my wife and I, my wife's actually never done. Right. And I haven't done since I was a little kid and I do think my daughter would love it. And I know my mom wants to do it. Um, so that one we're really going to try for. And then also my mom requested sci-fi, which is always just a hard get mad. Like it's, it's so hard to get sci-fi all the time. Cause it's a, it's a fairly small restaurant and it's just, it can be a little bit of a challenge, but mm-hmm. I also love sci-fi, right? So like, I'm going to try to do sci-fi. We're also going to try to do crystal palace. We're going to try to do garden grill. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping that the, the princess, uh, restaurant over by Norway there is open, which I'm not even going to try to say its name as usual. Uh, but you know, Walker shoot. Yeah, Akershush, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's, it's impossible. Um, so, I, so, but you know, like if we don't get any of those, I'm just going to keep trying until I get it. Like, there's rarely been a time where I haven't been able to get a reservation later with some effort. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, because I'll just sit all day and I'll just hit refresh all day until something pops up. Like, I'll, that's that's what I'll do. I mean, you know, I, I'm going to get it eventually. So. Yeah, I, I, but these are not like if I if I don't get one or two of these, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's you know it is what it is. I'll, we'll find something else. Now, c- can I pose a, a thought to you oh, no. in all of this? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, good. Do Do you suppose that your daughter will you know like you said this is you know you want to you want to do this because you know it's a first experience for her and everything? Are you worried at all that she's going to think that every dining experience at disney is a character meal because you're doing you know that's a risk that's a risk yeah um, like, like, like when we go older, to dinner gonna, one yeah you're, you're gonna be at the quick service and she's gonna be like where are the characters you know yeah, why are they the not coming to see me yeah it's a it's definitely a risk definitely a gamble uh yeah i actually hadn't thought about that i thought you were gonna go the route of what if she's terrified of the characters and now you have four other character uh dinners scheduled and that's uh, that's, that's also easy. a concern too that's a concern too <laughs> so. you, you you it's it's easy to shift gears though that's the thing you know yeah, if, yeah, it, if it doesn't work out you know you can you know you still got time to reschedule and all that kind of stuff but yeah, yeah. No, the, you know going the other way where, where the expectation becomes gets too high you know, wh- <laughs> wh- why is mickey not meeting me at uh the the corn dog cart <laughs> right like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if we're going to do Chef Mickey, by the way. I didn't even mention that one in there, I, which I like Chef Mickey, by the way. Maybe we'll do a breakfast there or something. I, I don't mind Chef Mickey. I know everybody rags on I, Chef Mickey, but it's, you know, I like honestly, I, I've I've never personally been there, but I've been I've been to other I've been to in Disneyland. I've been to to the uh, to the character um, meals there. And I don't know. It just. I feel like it's so dated and I feel like just where it is like in, uh, in the contemporary, in the contemporary yeah. it doesn't look, yeah, it doesn't I like, look good. I, I, I don't like, like it, man. I don't I, like I chef like Mickey's. <laughs> like, I like it. I listen, I, 
I've said this before though too. Like I think people usually the criticism is usually the food there, right? Like that's usually the criticism. Right. It costs a lot in the food, but like I think with any character experience, you're paying for the experience and not the food, right? Like you're not paying for the food. <laughs> like that's not the reason you're paying that amount. You're paying for the experience of of dining with those characters. That's what the whole deal is, right? That's I mean, why it costs I, as much as it does, and yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I went to to the storybook dining in uh um in uh what's it called wilderness lodge wilderness lodge that's different though because that was like that's a deli- that's like a signature restaurant right that they just right threw but, character but that, was, that was a character meal and it was really sure. good food so well, anytime it's <laughs> a buffet though or like all yeah. you know because most of the character meals are either buffets or all you care to enjoy uh meal you know meals or family dining yeah yeah they're they're the family dining you know uh, uh whatever yeah. it is the uh, the family style yeah so yeah family style yeah yeah, most of them are like that. So, you know, you just kind of end up with the food not being as good as like what you're talking about there. In fact, is that the only character experience that is is like a signature? I, I can't think, think of another it one. Is. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of another one that's that's a signature dining experience that is also a character experience because that's it's a fairly rare thing. It's usually like I said, it's usually a buffet or it's usually uh, you know, the the family style stuff, which I listen, don't get me wrong, I love a good family style meal. I was reading over the menu for Hoop De Doo. I'm I'm excited for some fried chicken. I mean, like, give me that. I'm I'm psyched. There's also unlimited alcohol included with that too, which I'm not a drinker, but I know uh my mom will enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> if sangria, I mean like you know, they got some good stuff yeah. there. So um, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna do that. I, I really want to do Hoop De Doo review. Uh we were gonna just do it. I it's funny because my mom, even though she's not planning this trip my mom is the type of the person she like gets really excited about this stuff like way ahead of time. So they were just here a week or so ago for my daughter's birthday. And my mom's like, I'm so excited for this Disney trip. And she's like, she's like planning it already. Like she's like planning everything that's got to be done. I'm like, listen, relax. I got this handled. We'll figure it out. I was going to surprise her with hoop to do review. And she's like, she's like, Hey, can we do hoop to do review? And I'm like, all right, well, I guess I can't really surprise you with it. If we're, you're asking me for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you you could do the fake out and say, "No, nah, it's already booked or it won't be open," and then I could do that. Yeah, double back on it. <laughs> Speaking of my mom, she may or may not come to the meetup. By the way, <laughs> okay. So so don't mention hoop de do over there. Got it? Yeah. Well, she she may or may not come. Uh, she lives an hour and a half away, uh, and she kind of wants to come. I think so. I was like, if you want to come, come. So uh, we'll we'll see. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do Dan's okay. question? Let, 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 yeah, let's finish this off. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Dan says, do you have a special toothbrush for traveling or do you bring your regular one from home? Oh, man, I bring my regular one. I got a got a nice electric toothbrush. It has a nice little travel case. Yeah, I, I got I don't have a special one. It's it's my same one. Yeah, I don't I don't have a special I don't have a special one, but usually it's like it. <laughs> I'll either do one of two things is that, you know, I'll bring the one from home knowing like usually when I, when I'm done the trip, I'll, I'll rotate it out for a new one. Cause I, you are supposed to replace your toothbrush, your toothbrush That's heads true. every once in a while. Or, um, what I'll do sometimes is, you know, when you go to the dentist and they, you know, they, they give you a toothbrush yeah, yeah. as part of yeah. the cleaning, um, those toothbrushes, I don't generally like or they're like i don't use them regularly but i'll hold on to that toothbrush and use it as a travel toothbrush so that makes sense i would get why you because you're traveling so much further like why you might not want to travel with like your best stuff right like oh yeah no yeah. it's yeah a- a- everything that i travel with i accept the fact that it could get lost or yep. get left behind so yeah i i'll never bring like like a good electric toothbrush with me or anything makes total sense yeah it makes total sense all right, so I think we got all of our questions done here. Uh, we got we've got some DVC news, and then we'll do our ad. But this, I don't really care about this member cruise thing. Like, it's not something I would do. But I know DVC announced uh, dates for 2023 for the member cruise. It's going to be it was it Bahamas, yeah, Nassau and the Bahamas, uh, and a day at Castaway Key. So, um, you know, the, these are in se- all September next. Wait, wait, this is a September trip. It's just one trip, right? So, yeah, September fourth to eighth. Yeah. I thought yeah. there were multiple cruises, but I, I guess it's just one. I looked at this quickly. So, <laughs> but yeah, so it's September 4th through 8th, as you said. So out of Port Canaveral. Um, so, yeah, if, if that's something you're interested in, then check it out. But um, there's no booking dates as of yet or prices yet. So 
um you know that is it is a blue card benefit though i believe right yep qualify for membership what membership extras so yeah you do have to have a blue card to participate in this so yeah i you know i don't know so i was just i was reading that but i i I realized so it says members are required to qualify or members to qualify for membership extras have to have 150 or more points purchased direct from DVC. But I realized that it's either that or if you're grandfathered. If you're grandfathered. Yeah. yeah. So as as long as you have a blue card is the, uh, the, the stipulation. Yeah. Or virtual blue card now, I guess. Yeah, Shoot. virtual card. Yeah, I need to get that set up on my phone. I just oh yeah, it's easy it. though. Like honestly, yeah. it took me like two minutes to do. It was super easy. Um, yeah, I just I just thought about that though, because yeah, we're gonna be there, and I'm gonna want to make use of it. So oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should probably get on that. I have to say this next piece though, like about the Disneyland Hotel DVC project, I'm a little disappointed by this. I'm not gonna lie. Did you read this about the name? uh no where where so the name of the disneyland dvc hotel project is officially going to be called the villas at disneyland hotel what a snooze that name is the tower was better than that like we've been calling it the tower call it the tower at disneyland hotel i don't know i'm fine with the tower (laughs) the villas at disneyland hotel just is boring to me i feel like they could have done better than that well, but I mean, it, it falls in line with the other um, DVC. Know. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> the, the the Polynesian villas and bungalows. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it just feels like there could be more there. I just, I, I don't know. The villa- I like the tower better. I think this is because I like the tower better. <laughs> yeah, but but D- DVC is always about villas, right? You could be the tower villas, though. You could be the tower, tower villas. villas. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. I would have been but, more okay with that. But you also have to realize too that you know the Disneyland Hotel is already a tower. So how are you differ how are you differentiating one tower from the other? Yeah, and I mean how it's being built is to blend in with the other parts of the Disneyland Hotel, right? So Yeah. yeah all right, fine. You I, know, me I know you're you're thinking of like Bay Lake Tower, right? Where Yeah, just give it a name, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> It's fine. Yeah, I think I, it's fine. I, I think be- they I think they want to keep it you know specific because then they can label it all as you know like you know here's the Disneyland hotel and then you know you walk over to the right or you know you know if you're facing the hotel you go to the right and it's like oh here's the villas right yeah yeah so yeah I guess that's fine it's fine I guess yeah <laughs> I just wanted something more <laughs> all right well should we go all ahead right. and do our ad and then we have a whole bunch of other stuff to talk about all right. So our ad this week is for Monera Financial. Monera, a world of DVC company, is the industry leader for financing DVC resale contracts. Monera offers lending with the longest terms available at 12 years, the option of no credit check, instant approval, low down payments, and no prepayment penalties. If you're thinking of purchasing a DVC contract on the resale market, go check out their quick online quote first. You may be surprised at just how affordable joining DVC can be. Go to ManeraFinancial.com or call 317-245-8800. And when you speak to them, be sure to let them know that Welcome Home sent you. All right. So we have our most ironic story of the week. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let, let, let's start by reading the headline, which is yeah, please. <laughs> uh, Meta, you know, formerly Facebook, but yep. because they want to call everything Meta now. Yep. Uh, Meta Quest virtual reality experience featuring uh, I am... Uh, ILMX Labs Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge coming to Disney Springs. Wow. But a guess VR where experience. experience. <laughs> yeah. So, so first of all, a VR experience at Disney Springs. Wow. That's yeah. uh, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> this this in particular, though, is coming to the um, NBA experience, which is not open. <laughs> <laughs> or, which is not open but also was the site of disney quest <laughs> yeah so 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 we've come full circle come full circle yeah yeah which by the way we can go do this it's may 2nd through 21st we could actually do this if we wanted to or th- it's may 2nd through july 21st i should say yeah so so yeah this this is a um it's a hands-on preview of of um a virtual reality experience so so this is the first thing to keep in mind is that this is not like um the void or anything like that it's like like a fully immersive experience this is just a vr experience so you go put on a vr headset um and they have something called 
um, Tales from Galaxy's Edge, which is going to be an experience available on the Quest 2. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you, you'll get to, I guess, walk around Galaxy's Edge in VR. Um, I know we could go do this. I don't know if I want to go do this, though. Well, I <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing. I, I know they started doing this yeah. at Disneyland, right? Like, so they, they've been doing this at Disneyland at, at Disney Spring. Well, not Disney Springs over there. It's downtown Disney, right? But um, why would I do a VR experience of of Batu when I can go visit Batu in person? Right. I don't know. But, that just feels stupid to me. <laughs> well, um. Yeah, I I see that, except, uh, you know, one, Disney Springs doesn't require any ticket to get into. Sure. And and this particular experience, this this is one of their demo things, right? Where, you know, it's it's not a paid thing to do this. It's, you know, know, anybody can go and do it. And, you know, it's part of is, you know, Disney's way of kind of selling, you know, hey, you could go see real Batu. So, you know, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily understand what that means but if they see a vr version of it they may be inc- more inclined to go and visit the parks right yeah yeah um the other thing too is yeah th- this is also pushing the uh the quest 2 and kind of selling you know disney has some experiences on the quest 2 so yeah yeah i, I get where it's beneficial um to me and, and i i guess I, I don't know if this is what Damon would say, but I feel like this is kind of where I'd agree with him on is that it feels like, you know, if if I'm going all the way to Disney, you know, being that I already have a VR headset myself, it seems like a waste of time to go there to do a VR thing because, well, but the I void was like, home. was VR, but a little different, right? Like it was VR Correct. to the next level. So that was like something you can't do at home. Right. So yes. yeah, so, like the void was worth it when they had the void and I'm kind of sad the void is closed. Cause I would love to do it again. Um, but yeah, no, I, I see your point and that's kind of how I would feel about this. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm not against free experiences. I remember like mm-hmm. 15 years ago, I went on a trip and they had a, a Segway was doing a thing at Epcot where you could like ride a Segway around. And I was like, I'll do that. That sounds like fun. Um, you know, back when Segways were like a, a new thing and kind of cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, yeah, that, that kind of thing. But like this to me, I'm just like, and I don't have a lot of experience with VR, but I'm also just not that interested. And like I said, if I want to go to Batu, I'll just go to Batu. <laughs> like I'll just go there and walk around like a real human being. So yeah. I, I just I find this story funny just because they're doing it in the closed NBA experience, which used to be the site of Gal- of Galaxy Quest, Disney Quest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Galaxy's Quest is something totally. Well, we're talking about Galaxy's Edge, and I see Galaxy yeah. all over the page, <laughs> and it was just it, it was in my head. So, um, but yeah, no, I just find that very uh, very ironic, and uh, you know. It, it is interesting to me because I, I know you had kind of said, like, why tear it down and build this NBA experience, which obviously failed miserably, right? Like, that was a huge failure mm-hmm. on their part uh, since it already is closed. And um, why why not just do Disney Quest 2.0 and do, like, VR experiences like this, right? Or, or you know, VR games. You know, there's all sorts of stuff they could do in there. Um, yeah. But it's just kind of funny that this is what they're doing and the site that they're doing it at. I maybe it's uh yeah I, maybe it's a test for the future yeah yeah may, maybe the, maybe they'll actually realize that you know hey they they should invest back in that again and you know maybe they'll they'll open their eyes and and we'll get like a a cross between Disney Quest and the Void which would be really cool that would it's, be cool like like yeah Disney Quest two point would basically be you know some of the stuff taken from the Void um you know VR experiences and you know more immersive and interactive stuff, but all, you know, housed in a single building. Right. Exactly. And, yeah. and then they'd have more space to actually do stuff. Cause um, I mean, the, the void didn't have exactly a ton of space for, yeah. for what it was, but, but was awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing is, you know, the void was different in that, like you said, it, it wasn't just, uh, you know, like a VR experience I can get at home. They had some additional effects. They had, um, you know, yeah, hot it would, cold and yeah, and like you know the blasters and yeah, yeah it was the, yeah. the feedback pack, like a lot of stuff that you know if I was to do that stuff at home, it would be really expensive. Yeah, and you know they they were offering it for you know the the price point wasn't exactly cheap, but um yeah, the, those packs this, were heavy, man. They were, they were yeah, those, they those were packs were heavy. Yeah, 
And, and the thing about this is it's just like, yeah, don't, don't, don't misinterpret what this is, is it's going to be, you go and you just put on a headset, you have a controller and you move around with a, yeah, with a yeah. controller. Like it's, Pretty it's much. not going to be immersive or it's not going to be immersive the same way that, that other experiences have been. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to be walking around like you did in the void, right? Like it's, you're just kind of in place. Right. So yeah. Physically walking around, I should say. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I miss the void. I, I you know, because one of my friends did the void in like a different place that did it in Washington, D.C. and actually was able to do a Marvel one. And like where you oh, got nice. to be like Captain America and like throw Captain America's shield. And like he said, he said it was it was awesome. He said he had done the Star Wars one, too, and he said it was better than the Star Wars one. So, um, yeah. And I mean, I they they used to do a Ghostbusters one, too. There was like a bunch mm-hmm. of ones that they did that were very cool. So I, I'm just sad that they're I think they're gone. I think they folded completely as a company. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, unfortunately, I don't think they survived the pandemic, but I think uh, they fo- I feel like they folded before the pandemic, like right before it. But I don't know. I know Disney owned a stake in them, too, but they did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they still have a website. So maybe they just trimmed down a little bit. Oh, wait. Yeah, the most they, immersive virtual reality experience ever is back. Okay. You're coming back. <laughs> all right. That means there's no there's no uh, information on that. But um, okay. So maybe they're rebooting. Maybe they're just coming coming back again. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe it's going to start up better. Right. Let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, let's hope the packs don't weigh like 60 pounds like they did last time where they have to lower it onto you with a pulley system. <laughs> I remember when they showed me that I was like, "Oh, you actually have to you you don't have people picking these up and putting them on me. You're literally like lowering it on to me." You know, it was just crazy it's, to me. Yeah. I I get, yeah. Hopefully the technology's <laughs> got a little better and they can make there, it a little lighter. There is new and better force feedback packs now, there so yeah. yeah. So, um Halloween all right, so stuff, are we right? Yeah, so we're going to talk about Halloween stuff in May. <laughs> What did I, no, I, I said so, I said somewhere I was like only Disney would announce a whole bunch of Halloween stuff in April and May. Yeah. Like what a crazy amount of Halloween stuff that they put out all like <laughs> out of nowhere. I know they're doing like a halfway to Halloween thing, but it's just it's just so random to me. Like it's I mean, I know they start celebrating in August, so really it's like only wow, 3 months away, right? So I kind of get it, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, you're right. It, you know, D- Disney has to get ahead of this because people are, you know, are thinking about fall bookings at this point. So yeah. they, they have to advertise it. The big thing on this list is that uh, the not so scary Halloween party is coming back. So it it's, is. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, they're not doing the uh, what was that thing? What was after it hours? <laughs> yeah. The after hours. It, it was called you? Boo. Um, booty you after hours or whatever it was i forget yeah, the, whatever the after hours like event was during the pandemic i don't remember but yeah. so but so yeah the, so good th- this is a full and proper halloween party so you know the park's gonna you know close earlier you, you know the halloween party will start earlier and all the stuff that you remember from the halloween parties is coming back so so the it's stage the shows yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, I noticed in here that they're um, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, the are ramping up uh, Hocus Pocus two as well, yeah, as part yeah. of this. Which uh, you know, I think I hope that movie lives up to the first one. <laughs> I, I really, I liked probably the first can't, one. right? It probably can't because yeah. I, you know, and I'm not a fan of that movie. I've talked about this before. I, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Me. It's I'm not like obsessed with it or anything, but. Um, you know, that movie didn't do well initially, right? It just kind of became a cult classic later on, right? Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it, in people's minds, it's probably going to be hard to, to beat it. But I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll do a great job. But but it's worth noting here that uh, August 12th through October 31st, 37 nights, doing 37 of these events, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah. But so Headless Horseman's back. Uh, the Booty You Parade is back. Uh, they also going to have the, they're going to have the fireworks. Now Disney's also got a sponsorship with, uh, what is it? Mars, I guess that does M&M Skittles and Snickers. So they're specifically calling those out that they're going to give out as candy. Um, guests will get a reusable trick or treat bag with a, a keepsake, uh, 50th anniversary celebration and Halloween design. The All right. tiniest trick or treat bag ever. <laughs> Br- Maybe bring your bigger. own backpack, people bring your own bag and, <laughs> you know, load it up. <laughs> and then <laughs> that's funny. There's a Hocus Pocus villain spectacular stage show. 
Um, let's see, you know, Disney villains, overlays. Oh, they're doing the overlays again. So they're going to do Space oh, Mountain, good. Mad Tea Party, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. So they're going to have the live actors in there. Did, didn't they do that during the Halloween party? But they had live actors in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah, they did, right? Yeah. That, that was. And, I hope they do that again. That was cool. And I, I would assume same thing with the, the ghosts in front of the Haunted Mansion and all that. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. And then, so, well, of course, go ahead. Sorry. Um, oh, I, I did notice. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> Jack Skellington will be, be back. Yeah, <laughs> will be back. Which I so the same way you don't you you're not excited about Hocus Pocus. I do not like Jack Skellington. I listen. For, I like the movie. It's, I I like the movie, but I'm not like an obsessive fan about it. You know what I mean? It's I, not like I'll skip it. Like if yeah. if it's on TV, I I won't like stop to watch it. I'll just like eh. I get that. I don't know. Yeah. So they're going to have special menu items like they usually do, but then also for the 50th anniversary, they're going to have they're going to add more fun to Mickey's Not So Scary with the uh, event exclusive step in photo opportunities and also the reusable trick or treat tote bag that we talked about before. Um, so, well, I mean, I don't know how big that's going to be, but they, they don't actually they don't have that posted yet, so we don't know what that's going to look like. But um, I, I will note that the prices seem to have increased quite a bit, um, mm-hmm. And so the ticket prices now range from 109 to 199. If I remember correctly, back the last time they did this, I think the lower range was 79. If I remember, uh, it was either 79 I, or 89. I don't remember, but yeah, you, you got me. Uh, got you googling. <laughs> I actually, well, I'm I'm actually going to go back and look at when because I, I I I paid for it back in like 2017 or something like that. Okay, yeah. And I'm wondering what I uh, what I paid for it back then. <laughs> My wife and I have been debating about this because we were, you know, we're going to be here during this, right? We're going to be there the first two weeks of October, and we we're like, should we do this or should we wait for my daughter to be older? She'll be four and a half by the time we do this. We're wondering just based on the price, like, I don't know if she's going to get anything out of it. She like might even be scared by it a little bit too. So like, I, I, we're almost thinking that maybe we wait on this to do it a different time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean... I don't know, though. I don't know. When do people usually take their kids to this? I, I, I have no idea. I I don't know. I mean, the, the thing is, is that I've seen kids... Like, I've seen really young kids there. Like, it's... Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm not, not sure. Like, yeah. I feel like young kids will go, right? Like, so... I mean, I'm, it's in the name. Not so scary Halloween. I know. Party. Like, <laughs> it's kind of implying that, you know, hey... <clears throat> Yeah, no, I I get that. I totally get that. So I don't know. We're we're going back and forth about it. We'll we're we're going to see. But it also is worth noting, by the way, uh, AP and DVC members are going to get some sort of uh, for uh, some sort of discount for certain dates. So we will Mm -hmm. get a discount of some sort. So so that's good to know. So I I am looking. So in in 2017, I paid sixty nine dollars a ticket. Oof, man, that really has jumped up quite a bit. Yeah, that's. That's a big jump. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. It's still going to sell out. <laughs> like, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's still oh, yeah. going to sell out. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I'm not I'm not surprised that they, you know, made it higher. Plus, I mean, they are offering more, I guess. Right. So a little bit more where they're having the commemorative tote and they're having seeming like seemingly some other I, other events. I don't. <laughs> I mean that that tote doesn't equate to forty. It's not worth forty dollars. No, <laughs> it's not worth forty dollars <laughs> more. No, hundred percent true. But. All right. Well, then we also got, they gave us a sneak peek at some merchandise. So a shriek peek, I should say. Ha <laughs> puns. Ah, uh, yes. Puns. Hilarious. Oh, the, the, <laughs> they have to have the spirit jerseys. I can't, yeah. I, I don't get the spirit jerseys, man. I, you know, I don't know, but. I, I've never, yeah, I, I've never liked spirit jerseys. I don't know. That being said, uh, yeah. I like this design. It's kind of cool. It's it's got ghosts with like Mickey ears on it. I mean, it's kind of kind of fun. I like it. Yeah, they got the those. Wow, those pants are those busy. pants are extra. Um, <laughs> and I don't like the shirts either. I actually don't are, like the shirts or the pants that they're. Are, are those supposed? Like. Is it supposed to be like pajama pants or like? Yeah, like people. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, <laughs> i mean I, I i would never wear those in public <laughs> nor would i um yeah no i'm i think i'm good 
I'm okay with the lounge fly backpack. It's all right. It's it seems to be that one that same pattern that's on the pants, but it looks better on the backpack for some reason. <laughs> can my, can we uh, can we call out the uh, the jean jackets with the skeletons? Okay. And I kind of like it. I I like these. Do you don't like the I'm jean feel- jacket? Or you do no, no. I'm I like this. I'm feeling this. Like me too. Yeah, this yeah. is a cool looking jean jacket. It's got the skeletons from. Uh, from one of like the very the first uh, Disney spooky, cartoons, scary yeah. skeletons. Yeah, yeah. Was it Walt Disney Silly Symphony Skeleton Dance? Yeah, like that's. Yeah. If you haven't seen that, it, they literally do. They have shirts and they have this really cool like printed jean jacket. It's probably going to cost like a hundred and fifty dollars, um, <laughs> but it's cool though. I like it. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this is more my speed. Like like you, you know. I I like those classic how yeah. like the the classic Halloween shows and stuff and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that they're actually realizing that people want merch of that kind of stuff. Like I I would do the sweater for sure. <laughs> if, yeah, no, uh, I would do I one of the, one of the yeah. the shirts or the sweaters. Uh like I'm yeah. I like both of these. I actually like just this design in general, but the jacket is the cool is the coolest, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, the jacket yeah. looks super cool. Yeah, but I mean again, it's a jacket. It's probably going to be absurdly expensive. Um yeah. I do like below this that they're doing some stuff with the um, with the uh, the bride uh, from Haunted yeah. Mansion. I, I like that. That's pretty cool. Um, where they just, I guess that's like a tote bag. What would you call that? A tote bag? I yeah, I, I don't know the the way she's holding it. I can't tell. It looks like almost looks like a yeah. Backpack, is it supposed maybe? to be a backpack or a yeah? I don't know. It doesn't really say in the description either, but it's kind of cool. I like it. It's not a. It's it's a it's a neat uh, use of that character. And actually, yeah. the little sweater, the little pullover sweater that she has, I don't know if that's part of the merch, but my my, my wife would definitely wear that. Um, let's see, a hook is... Yeah, I, I feel like my wife would go for that, too. Yeah, I'm, that's like... I'm not, so, yeah. I'm not going to point that out to her, because then she'll ask me to <laughs> find her one. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, I like the Hocus Pocus mug. It's fine. I mean, yeah. it has a little wooden wooden looking spoon that comes with it. Cool. Um, man, they're going hard on Hocus Pocus, though. You're you're 100 mm-hmm. right about that. They're going hard Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Um, which makes sense, you know, because that's coming out this Halloween, right? So. Yeah. So they're they're going to uh, yeah I, wrote the heck out of it. it, it it's funny how. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, when when shows like you know like Encanto or when even when Frozen came out, you know it was like, people were like, where, you know, we want stuff, you know, we want souvenirs, we want merchandise for these shows. And it was like, Disney was always behind the eight ball on this stuff. And I find it funny that Hocus Pocus, like you said, that's kind of a a cult film. They're actually being proactive about, you know, we know this movie's coming out. We're going to make sure that there's stuff available for the movie in the parks. It's like, what are you doing, Disney? (laughs) The interesting thing though is too, like, this mug just says Hocus Pocus on it. It's not even promoting Hocus Pocus 2. It's promoting yep. Hocus Pocus, right? Like, Well, well none of it says Hocus Pocus 2 on it. Like, it I'm doesn't, at all right? Merch. It, it yeah. just says Hocus Pocus, yeah. Yeah, so like, it's kind of interesting that they're doing which I guess it doesn't matter, right? If people want Hocus Pocus merch, they don't care if it says 2 on it, right? They yeah. just want Hocus may, Pocus stuff, may, right? Maybe, you know, that this may be Disney um, hedging their bets a little bit that if the second movie doesn't do as well, that oh, yeah, you true. Know, they still got just... Hocus Pocus stuff. That's right? very true. You make it generic. <laughs> yeah. Very true. I didn't think about yeah. that at all. Yeah. No, that's 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 very smart. Um, so yeah, I, I I have to say I do like the pumpkin bubble wand. I, I I do like a good bubble wand. That's that's nice. Um <laughs> <laughs> so I mean this is just a preview. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more that comes yeah. out. Um, but you know, that's that's really I think the bulk of it. And then we got food too. Like, man, they they released a lot of stuff the other day. <laughs> like I, oh, they're doing is this the, these crazy... cupcakes that I kept seeing pictures of. Cupcakes? Where are the cupcakes? I don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they look they look kind of basic. I you know, there's a couple things though in here. Like for Disneyland, they have the the cheddar pickle dog that uh, was uh, blew up the internet last year, right? <laughs> With uh, the, <laughs> the the pickle, um, the 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 hot dog inside of a pickle. And right. inside of a corn yeah. dog. Oh yeah, yeah. And then okay, dusted yeah. with uh, Cheetos. This, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's Cheeto dust. They don't say it's Cheeto dust, but it looks like Cheeto yeah. dust. And then, uh, uh, you know what though? The spooky those, churro. Got sorry. Those churros don't look very appetizing. See, I thought the opposite. I thought they looked delicious. I would. I'm. I'm all in for that. 
It's got it's got cinnamon sugar cut in half, drizzled with peanut butter and chocolate sauce, and topped with uh, Reese's pieces. They're not going to say that here because obviously it's not a sponsor. Yummy, pe- yummy <laughs> peanut butter candy pieces. Hmm, I wonder what those are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I, I always laugh when they just like give generic names generic. to brand name candy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, generic food item. That being said, though, man, th- this uh, push up pop of the yeah. uh, from that's cool. I love that, this idea. Th- th- this is. This is somebody actually like doing a little bit of Imagineer work here. So these, yeah, yeah, th- this push up pop looks like the uh, the stretching portrait from Haunted Mansion. I f- yeah, one we of should them, make yeah. sure that we should make uh, make sure this is one of the pictures on the uh, the oh, yeah, episode yeah. preview because <laughs> yeah, Cause yeah, it's this, so cool because so the idea of it pushing is. it up slowly and you're revealing it. I mean, it's just that's a brilliant way to do it, you know. And, and then, uh, and then the uh, the pop itself, or like the the casing, is the uh, the wallpaper. Yeah, the the, the bat dimension. wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's it's also citrus cake crumbs, raspberry buttercream, and blue crisp pearls. That sounds pretty good. Oh, by the way, I that don't care. Stuff it's is the haunted mansion stretching room. It could be whatever. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, this stuff is available. Some of this stuff is available now for a limited time, but like that push up pop will be available when we're there, uh, Trevor, because it's um. April twenty eighth through August thirteenth, so there, that's available okay, now. Maybe, maybe we need to uh, stop by Sleepy Hollow and get one just for uh, yeah, for the heck of it. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, you never have to give me an excuse to go to Sleepy Hollow. I'm always in for Sleepy Hollow. Okay, um, right, that's fair. You know, I know you don't like Jack Skellington, so this popcorn bucket is not going to appeal to you. Although it's available now, this is so weird that they're doing this Halloween stuff now. It just feels well, like yeah, because they because the whole halfway to Halloween thing, right? Yeah, they're, yeah, I get it. They're, yeah, they're doubling down on the uh, the experience. I do notice that this uh, Jack Skellington bucket looks like it lights up. It does, yeah. but very faintly. It doesn't look like it lights up a lot. Well, I think if it, it lit up, they would show it in the dark at least, so you can see what it. Looks yeah, like. put it put it on a white background when the thing is white, and then light yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, do that. I don't know. But um, we also got some stuff at Gideon's. Gideon's has like a very cool, like uh, like weird, like gothicy feel to it, and like they have mm-hmm. this little this little character that's very cool looking, and they have some interesting looking uh food. So pumpkin spice shadow cakes. Uh, Frankenstein cake slices, which is a three layer uh, chocolate cake with cut cookies and cream, buttercream, and loaded with M and M's. That sounds pretty great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a red velvet cake covered in light and fluffy cookies and cream, uh, marshmallow buttercream. It kind of looks like there's blood running down the cake, which is cool. It's, yeah, very, very uh, Adams family. It is. It's, it's yeah. very Adams family. Yeah, I do. I, I do say. I will say. I do plan to. Uh, take a trip to Gideon's while we're there. So oh, although these, okay. these little things are already done, right? So these were April 28th through May 1st. So that's already over. So, but I am going to take a trip to Gideon's anyway to get some cookies and other stuff. So, but <laughs> okay. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't know we were, uh, I don't know if we're going to have time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, i'm just saying i it might yeah. be something i do by myself uh you oh, know like okay. yeah. yeah when before you get there even maybe on like Got friday it. yeah yeah okay that's fair yeah <laughs> oh and these these cupcakes you were talking about just look like basic yeah. chocolate cupcakes it also looks like it has edible glitter in it and if you put glitter anywhere near me i'm i'm not going anywhere near it i hate glitter keep glitter mm-hmm. away from me and this has glitter all over it and i'm i no, I'm not here for it. Get get it well, away from me. And, and it's very like boring, Basic, right? Like yeah, like like you know boring. they they you know they did the icing in the shape of the the Sanderson sisters' hair, obviously, and that's it. Like it's yeah. yeah. I mean, these are already not available anywhere anyway, so who cares? But <laughs> okay. yeah. well, whatever. Yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah. So there's some stuff though that they're gonna have. So okay, so we got some other stuff yeah. to talk about. More Guardian stuff. I'm sure you don't want to watch any of this, Trevor, because it's now we're getting into spoiler territory, right? Yeah, I've I've seen the the posts and I've uh, I've kind of ignored. I've I've ignored a lot of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, look, yeah. I watched the video and I mean it. It looks very cool. I mean, it looks very fun. And I mean, the reviews that are coming from like cast members and from other people that have written it are extraordinarily positive. So, which is good. Uh, oh, I, you know. I don't doubt that. I just, I just don't. You don't want, want to ruin it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want to get hit in the face 
like I want to get blindsided by it. <laughs> sure. Now, are you yeah. okay with the spoiler of who is in the pre-show? Who? What actor is in the pre-show? Is that allowed? I thought we knew that already, wasn't it? Um, well, we didn't know about Terry Crews. That was a that was a new a new revelation. Oh, oh I thought because yeah, Glenn Close was in it, right? Yes, they announced that, that right a while ago. Yeah. But now they're talking. They uh, Zach Ridley shared a behind the scenes look of Terry Crews. Uh, as a commander of the Star Charter and a close advisor to Nova Prime. I just love the fact right. that Terry Crews is That's part of this cool. ride. That makes me yeah. really happy. I love Terry Crews. <laughs> that, yeah, I I can appreciate that. I'll, yeah. I, that makes me... That makes me feel even better about this ride because, yeah, I, I same thing. I, I enjoy uh, Terry Crews. Uh, I just really don't hope they don't have knockoff Rocket. I mean, like, I hope they got actual <laughs> Bradley Cooper to be in the ride. Like, if they're going to have maybe Rocket, Rocket. In the ride... Yeah. Maybe Rocket's just not in there at all. Maybe they did that preview and he won't be anywhere in the ride anyway, right? Yeah, maybe. But I mean, like, I feel like you got to have Ro- you got to have Rocket in it. It seems like from I know you didn't watch the video, but they did show Rocket in the ride. So, but oh, okay. I mean, Bradley Cooper doesn't have five minutes to record, you know, like, <laughs> or is, that, is it just beneath him to do a theme park ride? <laughs> I mm, I, yeah let, <laughs> I, I don't want to assume anything i mean it could just be a scheduling issue right like you know i mean but you would think they're and all that they're doing guardians 3 right like why not just throw it yeah. into the recording sessions he's already doing right unless they couldn't get that done on time but still do it anyway and then change it later you know yeah may, well maybe they will right maybe it'll yeah. yeah that's the good thing about voice acting is that it's very easy to swap out that's true. People. <laughs> that is true. But listen, I, I know you probably haven't watched the preview video, but it does look awesome. And uh, it, they did show a little preview of two of what the outside of the outside of it looks like at night. And it does look very cool. So, well, uh, we'll get to see I, that I will, at least. Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll definitely want to go and check it out and, you know, walk around and see what we can see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll wait to see the inside of the ride for when I actually ride it. Yeah, if there's any cast members listening that want to try to sneak us in, you know, we're not against yeah. that. Um, <laughs> just reach we, out. We to know us. the secret word. Yeah, exactly. So, Hook yeah. us up. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, uh, so you want to mention this next item? I, yeah. Um, so uh, Lynn manuel Miranda says uh, he wants a, an Encanto theme park attraction before a sequel or TV series is made. So um, uh, apparently... You know, he's been getting asked a lot, you know, you know, people love Encanto and, and, and there will be a seat or will there be a sequel? And, you know, he's on board with that. Um, this, this was an interview with, uh, Insider, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That he, uh, he said, uh, um, Disney is working on putting something together. The Imagineers are on it. Um, I don't know what they do or where they live, but I know they're on it. That's what he said. (laughs) So, Yeah. Well, and and he also said yeah. I, I he talked to Bob Chapek and said I know there's a world in which this casita lives in a theme park and we actually get to walk through it in real life. Now, I don't think that they would have a walkthrough attraction for this, right? Like, obviously, they'd have some sort of ride vehicle. Why not? But I mean, I, I don't know. They just don't have a lot of walkthrough attractions, right? Like, you know, there's just not a lot of that. Um, well, yes, but I, I feel. You know, because the, they're doing the update to Toontown yeah. and Toontown has a lot of walkthrough stuff. And I, I feel like, you know, Disney has to change gears a little bit every now and then. Sure. And um, because, you know, th- there used to be a lot of walkthrough attractions there, you know, you know, when. Yeah, no, no, there was. Disneyland and Haunted Mansion was almost a, a walkthrough attraction, right? So Yeah, exactly. So, so I think, you know. It might be, you know, the, the initial thinking is, oh, well, you know, you know, they'll do like a, a trackless ride system and, and you know, do all that. It might be good. And again, especially because of the fact that it is, you know, Casita, it doesn't. I think, you know, they have to look at it and and, you know, for this particular scenario, making it a ride through attraction wouldn't be great. Like it would be, you know, OK, See, yeah, I, you know, I you disagree. Know, I we, think it would be. <laughs> I I don't think there's enough. Um, I don't know. I'd, I I feel like you know it would be it would be part of a larger attraction. Like it wouldn't just be going through the casita. It would be, um, 
it, it would have to be part of a larger story or something that they were doing. But each one of those rooms that like each one of them live in are like huge and very detailed. Like you could just have the ride right. go through each one of those rooms and we didn't even see all the rooms in the movie. Right. But I'm, I'm thinking more or well, I guess you, you probably never saw us or I don't know if they had something like that when. Um, so in, in California Adventure, there is um, the the animation build. I can't remember what it's called now, but. Um, so there was the building where you could go and do like the, the, you know, the sitting and drawing with the artists and everything, but, but it was part of a larger building where like there was Bell's, um, library was in there and there was a, a play like Ursula's Grotto. And like, so like they had all of these rooms you could walk into and there was stuff to do. And just like standing in the rooms, there was like effects and things going on. And it was like, okay. they weren't rides. They were just, uh, um, it, it was just you know, like interactive experiences that you, you could, you could do. I feel like the, the casita could be something like that, or that that's what I'm envisioning is, you know, you know, each of the rooms can still be part of it, but I think it would be a lot cooler if it's something where like, you can kind of stand in there and, and, you know, things happen and, and stuff versus a more scripted experience where like, you're just kind of being dragged through, through scenes right yeah i mean i guess for me i was looking at it more of like an omni mover like a la like the the haunted mansion like where you move room to room and you move to the different rooms throughout the house and you know you there's different effects that are happening in each room or i mean i think you do you could do trackless too i i do think you could do trackless for this too but i i also i'm not against the idea of a walkthrough i do think there could be some interesting things, but I feel like you'd have to do it right, right? Like where you'd have to make it mm-hmm. so that you're walking, like the house would have to exist in real life. What I mean, and what I mean by that is you'd have to see the house from the outside, walk into like that little courtyard, and actually like walk through things, right? Like because otherwise, yeah. to me, it's like, all right, well, I'm not really walking in the house. You know what I mean? I I see this more as like they need to build the the Colombian pavilion and. Although there was a Brazil, uh, there was a Brazilian one too, right? That they were talking about. They do a Colombian pavilion, and then they put it in the Colombian pavilion in Epcot. How about that? There you go. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> where? Where? I mean, that's in that space between, or is it Morocco and Italy or something that they were talking there's a, there's about? There's a couple pads. Yeah. There's a couple pads. Okay. Yeah, I, and you know, I guess it, it would be okay as as like a ride. But I think yeah. it'd be good as a walkthrough too. I think it'd be good I, either way. Yeah, I I feel like, and again, this actually goes back to you know, you know, a good example is Moana. You know, they're 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 not doing a ride with that either. It's it's uh, it's, it's like an interactive experience. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, the, I just said they don't do walkthrough anymore, and they're currently building one. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so th- this is where I'm saying, you know, I I think you know whatever Disney is doing, um, I think. I think they have to shift gears every once in a while and, sure. you know, you know, cause if, and, and again, you know, I'm going to echo Damon here, you know, if they, if they just keep doing like, Oh, here's another trackless ride. Here's another, you know, here's the same thing with different screens. Right. Yeah. Um, that's, they're not doing themselves any favors. Sure. And, and I feel for something like Encanto as well, it is absolutely an opportunity for them to, you know, step back into, you know, actual imagineering and, so, you know, being creative with it because yeah, you know, they, they could just pump out a ride, you know, like you said, you know, it's very easy to, you know, put it on an Omni mover and, and, you know, you know, go through a couple of scenes and whatever. But uh, I think Disney has to do better than that because, you know, the world things are evolving and, and, you know, if Disney wants to, to get like, I, I think Disney needs to get back to remembering why they did some of the rides they did in the first place. Okay. And yeah, cause, cause uh, you know, not to take away, you know, I, I know some of the more recent rides have been fantastic, but I also feel like, you know, they, they're sometimes good at doing copy paste on their rides and it kind of gets them left behind a little bit in terms of innovation. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I I will say that's it. Actually, brings up a good question. Talking about this now, so are you are we going to ride Ratatouille while we're at Epcot, or are you going to wait to do yeah, your family? I, okay, yeah. I, I actually, um, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm I'm down to ride that. We All right, let's do it. Um, yeah, you know, we uh, the the thing is, is I've I've already like <laughs> I saw parts of Ratatouille years ago already because um it, it was in Disneyland Paris and I was like well yeah. I'm never going to go there so you know I'll check out usually when when rides are overseas first I'll check them out because I'm like you know the chances of them coming to North America are usually slim although Ratatouille and Tron have proved otherwise otherwise yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah so yeah I'd definitely be down to uh you know if we can get on that uh, why don't we just rope drop that on uh, the morning of the meetup all right let's do it yeah well let's okay. rope drop that's that. what we're doing done planned all right if anybody wants to join us for that we're making plans <laughs> on the 14th we're rope dropping that meet us in the front of fcot we'll find you <laughs> yeah, I, uh yeah i will i will be taking the monorail over there i don't know if you're driving or not but uh, i'll probably take uh, a bus i'll just take a bus okay over. but yeah well let's rope drop it might as well uh since there's a standby line now might as well do that right all right yeah cool uh, and by the way, my idea about the Columbia Pavilion was not an original. Uh, actually, Josh Gad apparently had tweeted in, in January that he wants to see a Columbia Pavilion with uh, nods to the movie at Epcot someday. So that was interesting, too. Mm-hmm. I almost forgot to add this next thing on here, uh, even though we had <laughs> yeah. discussed it earlier. <laughs> yeah. So, so go ahead. This, this is an international um, yes. park. So Tokyo Disneyland, they've uh, previewed a new space mountain coming in 2027. So they're, they're starting a major renovation in 2024. And by 2027, um, it, Space Mountain will be renovated and it'll have a whole new area around it, which this is looking this is looking more like Epcot than Epcot. It, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, it's almost hard to describe what this design looks like. I mean, it's, it's really interesting looking and you know what it reminds me of? Um, I say Tron, but <laughs> yeah. no, well, a little bit. Um, uh, there is a movie, uh, flight of the navigator. Oh yeah. 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 The, the ship from that. Yeah, I'm I'm getting that vibe from Space Mountain, like the the curves and and everything, right? It, it almost looks alien. It does, and so the interesting thing is they're going to basically tear down this whole original Space Mountain and rebuild it. I mean, it kind of looks like they might keep the original building and just kind of put like a skin over top of it, almost. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you yeah. can see you can see the spire, like like some yeah, of the spire spires sticking. on the top. Yeah, yeah, and the bottom too. Those like those little uh, angular pieces that are like you know that are, that are on the bottom of like the right below the rim. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Yeah, like you can see those are still there. The supports. So I, yeah, yeah. So it almost makes me think that they're just going to overlay this. They're going to keep the actual structural building, but then they're just going to change the whole ride on the, in the inside too. I mean, it's still going to be a coaster, um, but they're going to you know change the the the, the special effects. Um, they haven't, they don't, I don't think they really said that they're changing like the actual ride itself, you know, meaning like, are they going to change the, change the actual track and, you know, make it more intense or less intense or whatever. They're really just saying that it's going to be, uh, different effects. Right. So, but you yeah. think if it's going to take five years to do this, that I don't know. Oh, wait, well, no, I mean, it's th- three years to do it. I'm sorry. It's five years from now, but th- it's going to close in 2024. Right. Is that what yeah. I'm reading here? Yeah. And then yeah, 2027. But so it's going to take three years. I mean, a, a lot of the work could be just redesigning this whole area in front of Space Mountain. Like when, when you look at this, it's, you know, this is a very substantial redo because the, the, the current Space Mountain in Tokyo Disneyland doesn't look too different from the, you know, Disneyland or Disney World parks. Like it's, it's a copy. Um, it's a copy. I, yeah. I, I believe it's an exact copy of the uh, Disneyland version, if I remember yeah. correctly. So, so uh, yeah, again, with that, it's, um, you know, th- this is a lot more, um, you know, th- they've integrated a little bit more plant life into it. It's not as just, you know, metal and, and concrete. There looks to be some more water features in there. Uh, and, um, yeah, it just, it, it looks, it looks like it should be an Epcot. It's honestly. it's not even you know it's interesting though because it's not <laughs> even just Space Mountain right like it's it's the it's the surrounding area to match Space Mountain right like they're building like a whole area up. I you know I'm just thinking about it though like Trevor like if they did this exact same thing to the one at Disney World I feel like it would fit way better with Tron like it would like if yeah. they put that same overlay I mean that whole area would because. 
I, if it has a Tron vibe to it, right? Like I, I think it does the outside, like the colors, like the lighting package that they have going on. Like it just feels like that. It almost feels like it would, you know, fit better. I mean, I don't think that they're going to do it. I think if they tried to do anything to space mountain in, in, in Disney world, that there would be an uprising of some sort. Um, mm. You know, you don't think so? No, I, I mean, I don't know. It's, <sighs> I feel like it's getting dangerously close to the to the same point that Disneyland got to. And the the, the thing is, is Disneyland's Tomorrowland and Space Mountain. Yeah. Um, they tried to do a redo of it um, years ago, and it didn't go well. Like they they tried to mimic closer to like um uh like a steampunk Tomorrowland, which yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. like there was a lot of brass and stuff. It. Uh, it didn't go over well and it, it's it's ended up looking making it looked more dated. The thing is is you know Tomorrowland is Tomorrowland. Like, you know, I know we say hey, the Tomorrowland problem for a reason. <laughs> yeah. And to your point, this, you know, you know, if they redid Space Mountain to fit more in line with Tron, thinking about, you know, what the Tron uh what the canopy looks like over Tron and what this would look like sitting next to it. Yeah. It would absolutely look like people would forget <laughs> what old Space Mountain looked like pretty quickly, I think. Yeah. And I and that. I mean the current the current Space Mountain, the, the problem is is that it's you know, it's it's a lot of straight lines, a lot of just white metal. It's it, again, it's it it looks like a a 70s or 80s interpretation of the future, which is no longer accurate. Yeah, right. there, there was a, there's a lot of interesting stuff about the design of Space Mountain and, and how they actually made it happen. I'm just saying, like, it's a classic design, right? You know, it's it, I just feel like people are going to be mad about it if they were to do it. I, I mean, I, there's no indication that they're going to do it. I you're right. But, you know, again, we, we have Tron coming from Tokyo Disney. So sure. the I, what I could see happening, and, and this is something, you know, we've talked about for a while is, you know, Tomorrowland is in need of a bit of an update. Oh, for sure. And and I could see, you know, this being something, you know, they're announcing this for Tokyo Disney. What they learned from Tokyo Disney, they could, you know, back to my point about Disney liking to do copy paste, they could take that and bring it over here. And so, you know, in the next couple of years, we could be hearing about a reno for Tomorrowland coming. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, this I do think that this would fit in way better with Tron. I think it would it, it, mm-hmm. the lines of it, just kind of the look of it. Now, the question is, I would be excited you, for this if they did this. You would be excited, yeah. I yeah. I, th- I would be excited too. I think it's a good look. I I I almost wonder though if it almost would look too much like Tron, where they they, they would be kind of blend in too much, but not really because Tron is like a different shape than this, right? This is like a big, this almost looks like an alien spaceship is what it looks like now. You yeah. Know? yeah. That's like I said, it's, it's flight of yeah. the navigator. That's, that's yeah. what it reminds an alien me alien spaceship. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and that's cool. I, and, and it's cool that they're doing a whole new ride experience too. I mean, I do wonder if at some point we will see Disney world completely overhaul space mountain and make it not as, um, rough of a ride meaning like you know uh, maybe replacing all the tracks i I believe they did that in disneyland years ago and and made it a much smoother ride than than it it's yeah it's an entirely different ride in disneyland yeah it is but i mean i i think didn't they replace all the track though and make it like a much better ride at some point or something i seem to remember that i'm just blanking on the details i mean they've so they've redone like the uh the cars at various points and even maybe what you're thinking of is that they redid the, uh, the Matterhorn um, cars, which the Matterhorn is actually um, the same ride type as um, space mountain in Disney world. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's the, the bobsled type uh, um, uh, cars. So, so they, they redid that, but uh, yeah, I don't recall there being a big overhaul of space mountain. Yeah, maybe I'm misremembering that, but I could have sworn yeah. that they did something with it. But um, yeah, I don't remember. Um, yeah, I know it's a totally different ride too because there's only they only have one track in, in the Disneyland yeah. version, right? Yeah, so it's not it's not the not the same. But um, why am I why am I just trying to figure this out here? Like I'm I feel like I'm losing my mind. Um, but yeah, I mean I feel like it would be better if they could at least you know 
make the ride a little bit smoother. Oh, wait, no, yeah, look, I found this on Wikipedia. The completely rebuilt track is the exact same layout, but they just, like, they just rebuilt the track to, you know, make it, uh, you know. Oh, they yeah. just smoothed out the bumps. Basically, yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. And I mean, listen, you know, I, I, I've come off, I came off Space Mountain last time I wrote it, and I was like, ooh, my back hurts a little bit from that thing, <laughs> you know? Um, but, and I'm sure they could make it a lot smoother and a lot better, um, but you know, that would be a huge refer- refurbishment that would take years. So, and maybe once Tron opens, maybe that's what comes, you know, maybe that's what come ne- comes next. They open up Tron and they shut down Space Mountain and start doing a refurb there. Cause I'm trying to even remember the last time that Space Mountain in Magic, King- in, uh, Magic Kingdom has had a, you know, overhaul. I feel like it's been a while, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's kind of what I was getting towards is, you know, that um, Tomorrowland is creeping very dangerously oh, yeah. close to being outdated. Right. So a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it, that's they you know, there's the Tomorrowland problem, right. Is that the future is, is always coming. Right. So, and they had this problem in the original Disneyland too, where it's it, their view of the future was quickly overtaken by the actual future. And then you have to keep updating it. Tomorrowland is very outdated at this point. Right. It, it really is. And also just like, I mean, listen, I like the Buzz Lightyear ride and, and all, but like it doesn't really fit there, I feel like. And and neither really does Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. It's just kinda just kinda there. Well, right. The, these all predate, you know, you know, before we had like entire lands devoted to Pixar and Toy Story and stuff like yeah, that. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's fair. <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. Just like so, how Star Tours is in Tomorrowland and Disneyland, which you'd find that weird. <laughs> I would. Yeah, that would be very weird. (laughs) But anyway, um, there should be some interesting things here. I I don't like I said, I don't see it imminent that they're going to redo this. Like, I mean, I could see them doing an overhaul and, you know, making it better in some ways uh, sometime soon. But I also don't um, I don't think they're going to do what they're doing in Tokyo because, you know, a big part of this is they don't pay for the stuff that happens at Tokyo. They don't fully own that park. Uh, That park is owned by the. by the government and the uh, Oriental Land Company, right? So they don't, they actually don't pay for most of the stuff in that park. So they can do stuff that's more expensive and not have to worry about budgets as much, right? So mm. um, that's a, that's a big difference. But, and if, yeah, go ahead. But like I said, that, that's where I think a lot of stuff happens there. And then they, they take what was designed and what was done. Well, because, and they can know, do that. Yeah. Because even though yeah. they don't own it, they, it's basically that company is, uh, like uh, Oriental Land Company is basically licensing and uh, and paying uh, Imagineering to uh, design this stuff for them, right? But Disney still retains the ability to use them whenever they want, right? So like, it's it, it's an interesting situation because they don't have to pay for the rides. The the company doesn't have to pay for the rides and everything, um, and the Oriental Land Company pays for all of it. So it's so like the budgets are much bigger and they can do much bigger things like this. But, but then Disney gets the advantage of they can yes. take something that's pre made or that's already you know exactly. the designs already been done, and they can just manufacture it in North America. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So. Yeah, I, I mean, this is cool. I would love to see something like this in the future from Disney World, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> but yeah. this, like, we're not going to see this for five more years anyway, right? So this is twenty twenty seven. So I, I'm I'm betting that if anything's going to happen, you'll hear possibly by like twenty twenty five, there may be talk of a reno of Tomorrowland. Yeah, I like see it'll that. be a couple of years, you know, because they'll they'll get into it and then you'll. Once they get far enough in, I could see them start talking about planning for North America. I will be interested to see just in general if we hear anything this year about new stuff coming to the parks, right? Like, because yeah. we ha- there's a lot of projects ongoing, right? But once Tron is done and once like the stuff in Epcot is done, we don't have a whole lot of vision what's coming after that, right? So I'm assuming they're going to announce some new stuff fairly soon here, you know? Whenever the yeah. next D23 is or whatever, you know? Sometime in the fall, I can yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be interested, but we should move on to this last Disneyland item and, uh, and start wrapping up here. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So we had talked a couple weeks ago about a rumor that the Disneyland, uh, I'm sorry, the Disney uh, Paradise Pier Hotel was going to turn into a, wasn't it Toy Story? It was specific to Toy Story, I think, right? Yeah. But now Disney has officially announced that they're actually going to retheme it as a Pixar hotel. Um, they only put Which out makes like more sense. It does make more sense, right? It's more general. They can put more IP in there, right? But 
they only shared one piece or I guess two pictures. Uh, and I mean, look, I like it. I like it better than the other stuff we looked at last time. I, I, I they have mm-hmm. this really interesting, like mobile thing going on in, uh, in uh, the 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 lobby that's got like like just a stained glass characters. with the different yeah characters. yeah but it's just like their shapes it's not even like details on them it's very like fancy yeah. and <laughs> right but yeah there I don't know. so there there's two things that are they're not fundamentally changing the hotel sure I yeah. I can I can see that from this concept art like like the, I I know exactly where the, with all the 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 mobiles it's it's right in the middle of the lobby um so they're just retheming it really yeah yeah they're retheming it one thing that uh, and i can't remember if it was in the where i saw it but i heard part of this was there so so this is going to be um the paradise pier hotel it makes sense that they're doing pixar because paradise pier in california adventure is now pixar pier Yep. So I can see this becoming the Pixar Pier Hotel, you know, to line up with that. I did hear rumors of, and I don't know if it was in this article or where I saw it, but there was talk of um, having a a bridge or something from this hotel going into um, California Adventure. So that's one thing that, um, you know, as part of this renovation it would mean uh, a walkway across. Um, it's in Disneyland this article. Boulevard? Is yeah, it? Oh, okay. Then I, all right. I Today we're excited to share that a walkway is currently under construction, which will soon give Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel guests a convenient entrance to California Adventure. Yeah. So, so the, previously you had to walk across Disneyland Boulevard through the Grand California to get into California Adventure. So, so this hotel is now going to have its own entrance into. California Adventure, which I expect where it sits, it'll be kind of towards the back of Pixar Pier, um, like, but or where where is it? The um, Whirlwind of Emotions, I think, is the the ride, the uh, the Inside Out ride. So I'm expecting that this will will. So this actually is creating a second gate for, or not a second gate, actually a third gate for yeah, um, for California Adventure. Which is I, I actually just I just pulled up Google Maps just to get a look at it, and you're right, it's right by Emotional Whirlwind. Um, yeah, and and also the there's a pizza and pasta place and a Garden Grill and Goofy Sky School right right all there. So I, I wonder, yep. are they going to build something over top, or are they going to build like a tunnel, like because they got to get past Disneyland Drive there, right? So yeah, what what are they constructing? <laughs> I, I would expect it would go over top, okay, because because uh, Disneyland Drive already actually goes underneath. Um, downtown disney okay so it's already so, a little so bit that road actually already it already goes down underneath and then comes up on the other side so um yeah i'm i'm expecting this will be a, a raised walkway that oh, wow. uh okay. yeah yeah i'm just trying to That's, see where they're actually going to bring them in but it's i mean it's it's cool that they're doing that i mean i it's you know there's only i think people place a lot of value on being able to walk right into these parks right and and mm-hmm. I, I don't think i know right like you know we we know why Beach Club and, and why Boardwalk are such valuable DVC contracts, right? Because you can walk right into Epcot and it's right there. And I mean, it's the same with Bay Lake. You can walk right there. So it's, it's um, yeah, I mean, it's, and I get it. Andy said it last week on the show. You, you know, yeah. there's not a lot of hotels that have, um, you know, direct access into a park. There, exactly. There's, exactly. there's really only a couple. That, so this is adding yet another hotel because, yeah, you know, Pixar Pier – or, or Paradise Pier Hotel was, you know, I stayed there myself. It wasn't awful, but it still sucked, you know, coming back <laughs> at the end of the night and you walk all the way through like, like Grand Californian's a big hotel. Um, It's, it's a very, it, it's yeah. got a lot of sprawl to it. And then you still have to cross the street, get to your hotel and then get inside having something where, you know, you're in the park and you could just say, okay, we're done, you know, and then just go across a walkway and you're back at your hotel. That's huge. And yeah. And, yeah. yeah and, and I know that from, uh, um, like I said on, on the last episode, you know, we, we had a hotel room right above the entrance to uh, grand Calif or to California adventure at the grand Californian. And multiple times we like, we were in there during the day and we were like, okay, you know, we don't need our jackets or, you know, you know, I've, 
you know, I just want to go back to the room and sit for a bit. And it was literally five minute walk. We're in the room. And yeah, that, that is, that is more value than you realize when you're spending multiple days at a theme park. (laughs) Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, that's great. So yeah, I, I, listen, this is, this is good. I think it's uh, I mean, yeah, it's a good thing for Disneyland for sure. So that's yeah, really I'll, the only thing I saw see. in this article that was interesting. But if you see, is there anything else in this about Disneyland that you want to talk about? Uh, no, the only thing I'll be curious is um, how <laughs> the, I'll be curious if they uh, if the entrance is like um, like the one in Grand Californian where you, like you, certain times of the day you have to have a room key or you have to prove that you're staying there or probably, or will it be like um, if you're staying at like the Disneyland hotel, could you use that as a way to get into the park as well? Like I'm, I'm curious how, how that entrance is going to work. work. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah. That will be interesting. But yeah, I mean, there's a couple other Disneyland things in here about them, like breaking ground and like Toontown and um, about some stuff they're doing at Disney Springs, but I read, I keep saying Disney Springs, downtown Disney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I mean, I, nothing, nothing that I was that all that interested in, but yeah, yeah, these, uh, yeah, some of these other things are just, uh, yeah, they, you know, we knew these rentals were happening. There's really nothing to to nothing talk new. about at this yeah. point, though. Yeah, really, just the hotel. So, yeah. All right, so I think that's all we got. I mean, is there anything else that we want to talk about, or is, you know, we're we're almost at two hours, so we should probably wrap up. Yeah. No, I I, I think we're good, and I think uh, yeah, we're just uh, I'm uh. We're gonna to have to talk some more about our our meetup here in the next couple of weeks, and yeah, hopefully, you know, you know, I'm looking forward to meeting our listeners. I'm looking forward to meeting you finally. In person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, one one thing we should talk about we didn't we didn't talk about this before the show, but um, you know, th- that weekend when we're down there, we're not going to be able to release an episode that week. Yeah, we haven't really talked about what we're going to do about that yet, right? So maybe we just take yeah, a break for a week or, you know, I, where we do a wait list. I don't know. I, I think it'll be fair, that, you know, you know, to our I think it'll be fair to say that we'll be posting stuff from the parks. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, maybe we don't need to do a formal episode that week. Yeah, maybe j- just throwing that out there. So, you know, you know, for people listening to the show that, uh, um, yeah, we're, we're going to be busy that weekend. And I don't think. uh um, I can't see us recording an episode, um, before or after. <laughs> yeah, that. we probably like, won't. Yeah. We'll we'll figure that out though. Yeah. All right, let's wrap right. it up. Okay. Um. So, if you guys have any questions, or if you uh, want to reach out to us, share stuff about your own trips or or anything like that, you can always uh, email us at welcomehomepodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, you know, please send us questions and, and anything else that, uh, Disney related that you think you guys, um, want to share with us. You can also follow us on Facebook as welcome home podcast and check out the, the, um, Facebook group, welcome home Disney waitlist. If you want to get in on the discussion about the episodes, see some of the memes, see, um, you know, you know, great questions that come up, like uh, like what toothbrushes we're bringing. Very on important our trips. Very important. <laughs> yeah, <questions. laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you can also follow us on YouTube as Welcome Home Podcast and Instagram as Welcome Home Picks. Uh, like I said, you know, we have a meetup coming up here. Um, you know, those will be good places to see some of the stuff that we're we're getting up to. We'll obviously be posting a lot of it on Facebook as well. Maybe we'll do some Facebook Live stuff. I don't know yet. We'll, uh, you know, Tom and I will figure that out as we go. Um, but you know, make sure you you guys are subscribed to those channels so that uh, you don't miss anything that we're doing. And if uh, you're interested in supporting the show, you can always go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com and check out our merchandise. Um, you know that helps us do stuff that uh, like t-shirt designs and giveaways and things like the meetup that we're doing. Um, all a lot of that stuff happens because we've gotten you know some great support from from our listeners and, and uh, as well as our sponsors on the show. Um, alternatively to that, if you would you know if you like Patreon or you want to support us through Patreon, you can go to patreoncom pod and check out our different uh, tiers of, of support there that all come with exclusive merchandise. And uh, an exclusive logo that you can't find in the store. So 
um, please check that out. And uh, Patreon is also the way to get access to our Discord server, which is a little bit more intimate and a little bit more um, uh, little uh, different conversations that we have with our listeners. Um, so yeah, make sure you, you check that out if you're interested. Speaking and of the Discord, as, by the way, Dan K just yeah. dropped in and asked if we had seen the Magic Band Plus thing, and, and apparently uh, now it's being reported that it was a mistake that they were released. They weren't supposed to be released yet. So oh, darn. <laughs> okay. Anyway, all right. Maybe we, may, maybe I won't get a Magic Band Plus over there, but uh, y- you never know. <laughs> um, but yeah. So if uh, um, yeah, last but not least, if you guys want to leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify. Um, you know, please consider dropping and giving us five stars. We'd uh, we'd really like it. Um, uh, but more so, it's it's important because it helps other people find the show. So um, you know, please leave us a review if you can. Yeah, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, just about any podcast app out there you can find us. Just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company, and as such, all opinions we express on the show are our own. So please consult your DVC representative for more information about anything we talked about today or, you know, Disney cast member, whoever you want to talk to. Uh, big thank you to Monero Financial for sponsoring this episode and, of course, to World of DVC for their continuing support of the show. Uh, join us next time for more Disney Parks discussion. Of course, more DVC talk. We hope to see you all real soon. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. When we hit a chair, how she can cuddle. 